What I am going to do, I'm going to take you back in history to how we used to do things a long time ago in regards to solder mask. Now, some of you are going to look at this and you're going to, yep, I know that. I saw that years ago because I was there. A lot of you are not going to know what I'm talking about. And it really doesn't matter. What's important is after I fill in the time with what we used to do, is I just want to give you a glimpse of where we're going. And uh, maybe you're aware of it, maybe you're not. Um, but I truly believe it's closer than you think. And that's why um, I just want to talk to you about it for a few minutes today. So years ago, what we used to do is we used to take a, a, what's called a silk screen, which is basically a nylon, and we would stretch it up real tight, and we would shoot an image of our substrate, which in reality is our circuit board. This is a hand method. This is a semi-automatic press. There wasn't discussions with, with wavelengths versus solder mask wavelengths. So if I could give anybody some advice, please, if you're going to buy a unit, consider the solder mask as well. Do yourself a favor. Don't buy a machine and then find out that your solder mask of choice isn't going to be user friendly to your machine. So this is where I'm really going to enjoy myself because I like this part. The question is, what's next? What are we going to do? I think you all know where I'm going. I'm not going to say it yet because I don't want to. I want to enjoy this part. Um, we are amazingly close to the next generation. And when I say that, I enjoyed the last generation. When photo imageable came out, it changed the way we built circuit boards. It changed our yields. It changed the way we priced circuit boards. It changed our profit margins. It did everything for us with very little upfront money. Because let's face it, you could run it today. You didn't have to have dedicated equipment. We all went that route. But it changed the way we did things. The next thing we do is going to change it more. It's going to be a bigger impact than it was in the mid-'80s. It won't require artwork. It won't require all your typical processing equipment. Think about your room that you have in your circuit board shop. You have a room this big, and you've got coding lines and developers and exposing units and ovens. Most of that can be gone. Okay? You still have it, but you can do other stuff in, in that location. It will eliminate the three biggest challenges in the solder mask operation. And this is another favorite topic of mine. I've been doing this for 35 years. Over those years, we love talking to circuit board shops, and we love asking presidents and CEOs, what are your biggest issues in solder masks? Tell me what your biggest problems are. When they get past the fact that they're going to admit they actually have some problems, because let's face it, we all have problems now and then, the three things we hear about are registration, before laser and DI units came out, granted, but registration, solder mask in the hole, and broken dams. And then we'd say, well, what are your yields? And we always hear 99%, 99.8%. You know, I urge you, if you own a circuit board shop, take a few minutes, go back to your inspection area, go look in the corner where there's those big brown boxes and they're full of green circuit boards with arrows on them. Go look in there and see what you're throwing away boards for. So next generation, we're going to eliminate registration issues. We're going to eliminate mask and hole because we're not going to put it in there to begin with. Registration issues are gone. Artwork, gone. Bleed, gone. Skips, gone. Exposed copper, gone for misregistration. Uneven mass deposit, gone. Because we just replaced our application method. We now have a piece of machine that's going to put the ink on the board for us right where we want it. Right now, a typical LPI process. You clean your substrate, you coat the board, you tack dry the board, and you tack dry it just so you can handle it. You go through an exposing process, you go through a developer, you look at it, and you cure it. You still have to think about legend. You've got to put legend on it, and you've got to cure that. And then my favorite word, serialization. If you've never seen an operator do serialization, I urge you to go in the back and watch him do serialization. You want to poke your eye out with a salt shaker. It is the most painful operation you can ever imagine. This is what solder dams are going to look like in the future. If you remember the other one we had, it was nice and square and straight and a flat top. Inkjet's going to have a little problem with that. At least today it does. 
So we have uh, IC pads, we have the black dams, and the white solder mask is we put that on there, or the white ink is just for, uh, just for contrast. These are done today. We do these today. I mean, we're not doing production, but there's machines right now, right now as we speak, there's a machine printing boards. The dams are looking like that. 